Let's add some tooltips to both items and blocks. Let's see how to do that. All right, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to add tooltips to both items and blocks. We're especially going to take a look at how to add those to blocks because that has been something that a lot of people have been struggling with. Um, this, once again, is something where a little bit of Java knowledge definitely helps. But let's first of all, take a look at how to do it in items. To add tooltips to items, you actually have to have a custom item class right here. There's also well, sort of a different way that I will show in just a moment, but we're first going to do it in the custom item class here. And we simply need to override one method, which is going to be the append hover text method. So right there, then I can click the tab key to autocomplete this. And then what we can do is we can simply add to this tooltip component right here. That's pretty much all that we need to do. What we're going to do actually is what you've probably seen if you played some other mods is when you hold down shift then more information appears so that's basically what we're going to implement as well and the way we can do this is we make an if statement and call a screen dot has shift down and then also have an else statement here so when we press down shift then anything that happens in here is going to happen and then if we don't press shift then everything that's here is going to happen and what we're going to do is we're going to call p tooltip components dot add and then a new translatable component right here and then we'll pass in a key so this is tooltip dot tutorial mod dot blowtorch this key here is the key that we will need to supply in the enus underscore adjacent file for us to basically translate. The idea of using the translatable component is the basically because then you can actually translate the tooltip as well, which might be quite an important thing to do. Just keep that in mind. And then down here, we're actually going to do blowtorch shift because then we're basically, you know, not holding down shift. You can do it in either way. Just know that you have to do it. And you can do it either way, either put the shift here or the shift here. Uh, either one would, of course, work. And then we would want to add the tooltip right here. So I'm going to quickly just copy this over because that makes it a little bit easier. And this is just the exact same key that we've just made. And then this is going to display there. So it's going to say hold and then shift in a specific color here for more information. One thing I wanted to mention here for this symbol, right, this paragraph symbol, you might have to replace it with with the actual Unicode symbol. So instead of that, we actually have to basically copy in a code. So this would be backslash U00A00A7 and then the E. So then the actual thing that you want to have. And then the same thing goes here, backslash U00A and then the seven. So if that doesn't work, so if the actual symbol doesn't work, then you try this one and then it should definitely display in a different color. If you're ever stuck with the formatting codes, then I have also linked this link in the description below. This is basically the fandom wiki article for the actual formatting codes which you can basically use in both the books as you can see and you can also use them in anything where you actually display text inside of Minecraft so even in for example the names of the items and such that would also work right now we have a tooltip for the blowtorch item for the smart blowtorch item however what about for example if you want to add it to blocks well we can do this in several different ways. The easiest way, however, is to make a new method. So we're going to basically overload the register block method again, this time by giving it a tooltip. I'm actually going to copy over both of those methods here. And as you can see, this is once again called register block. And this is once again called register block item. However, in here, when we are actually creating the new block item, we're actually making an anonymous class in here and overriding this append hover text immediately with a new translatable text component where we have passed in the tooltip here. So this is a very interesting way of doing it. And you can, of course, also combine it. So you could also get another method in where you also specify the creative mode tab in there as well. And then have four different methods. It doesn't really matter. You can have as many methods in there as you would like. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to do the following. We're going to delete this. So it's no longer going to be the creative mode tab. We're actually going to pass in a string here. So this is going to be the tooltip key. And this is going to be tooltip dot block dot tutorial mod tutorial mod dot titanium underscore block. So this is the key that we need to actually pass in so that we can see something properly. So we're going to actually copy this and add it to the en underscore us adjacent file as the key here. And then this is going to be something like, um, let's say, a hardened metal block, almost impossible to break. So something like that. And then this should actually display, uh, also making sure that we write impossible correctly. There you go. This should display now when we actually hover over the item for the titanium block. So this is the way that you can add this. And then also 
making this anonymous class here once again. There's a Java thing, so some Java knowledge is definitely preferable and advised in this case. So then you would also be able to add this to normal items in the mods items class. So that would also work as well. Then you don't need to make a custom item for every item that you actually want to, you know, ha have something displayed when you hover over it. But for the time being, this is all that we need to do. So let's see if it works. Or right, we find ourselves back in Minecraft again. And let's see. So first of all, the titanium block, as you can see, it has now a tooltip, a hard metal block, almost impossible to break. So that's pretty cool. And the funny thing is here, you can see that now this is actually displaying the actual thing. So this is click a block and see if you can blowtorch it into a different item. And if I actually press shift, then it turn turns back to a whole shift for more information. So this is, of course, just reversed. But there is a very easy way that we can, of course, fix this. So let's switch back to IntelliJ. And of course, if we take a look at this, so this is, of course, has shift down. So this, in this case, is called when we actually have shift down. And this is called when we don't press shift. And inside of here, we can see that we're actually showing this, you know, the hold shift when we're actually pressing it down and the other one when we don't do it. So the simple thing would probably be to, 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 to do something like this. So that now the whole shift is right here and the normal one is right here. And that's actually all that we really need to do to fix that. So that's not a crazy mistake there. So all is good. Right, and that's actually how easy it is to add custom tooltips to Minecraft, both items and blocks. So I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. All of the code is, of course, once again, available in the GitHub repository or in individual gist or linked in the description below. Otherwise, subscribe for more tutorials just like this one and I'll see you next time. So yeah.